Shepard and in this short video we're going to take a look at plyometrics. Now plyometrics are integral to your running, your jumping and your sprint training and they involve what's known as a stretch reflex. Now if you've got good eyesight you might notice that I'm holding an elastic band. Why am I doing this? Well this is to tell you a little bit more about what happens during a plyometric movement. When you move into a jump as your foot hits the ground, the muscles around your ankle, knee and hip stretch and that's storing energy as is happening in the elastic band at the moment. In milliseconds, they then, the muscles then go into a shortening action and they contract very quickly and that's known as, known as a concentric action and it's the quick stretch reflex in the muscles that can generate enormous amounts of power in that split second. Leg stiffness is crucial to the plyometric response. Basically, when your legs hit the ground in order to perform a takeoff or absorb the force and move into the transition between a hop and a step, for example, you don't want the legs to collapse. You don't want there to be a bend. You want there to be a stiffness and that reaction, that stretch reflex that I talked about earlier, that will ping you into the next phase as we're talking about the triple jump. To develop leg stiffness, you need to train specifically you need to be on top of the plyometric movements that you're performing. You want to create a contact with a minimum degree of knee flexion using my finger and that knuckle as the, um, the knee. If you allow the bend to be too much, you're going to be slower onto the ground and slower off of the ground. So to create ideally greater stiffness, you need to have a high angle at the knee joint and keep the hips up as well. Doing this will enable you to react much more quickly from the surface and, an, and to utilise the natural elasticity of your muscles. So how quickly does the stretch reflex have to operate? Milliseconds as you'll see from the caption and the full speed jump coming up. That's why we need to make our ground contacts and reactions as quick as possible. It's important to train specifically with plyometrics for your particular event. When I'm training my athletes, we don't necessarily use the same plyometrics for the triple jumpers as opposed to the long jumpers. Why is this? Well, a long jumper, some obviously, has to deal with one reaction, one takeoff. And therefore, if you do multiple contacts, say for example, 20 meters worth of bounds, the contacts on each landing from the phases is going to be slower, milliseconds, sorry, milliseconds slower than the one required for the long jump takeoff. Therefore, you want to maximize the potentiality for your training to transfer into your jumping. Hence, I'm more keen on doing one contact, single contact exercises, and contacts off of approaches. So you might do a 10, 11 stride approach, run onto a box, low box, 10 to 20 centimeters high and bound off and then take off into the pit. So we're hoping to achieve a similar level of force, overcoming force, rate of force development with, as with the long jump takeoff and hopefully that's going to have greater transference. Jumping onto the top of a box or a platform from a stationary start it's not really a plyometric exercise. Okay, if you bend and then project up onto the box, there's a degree of the stretch reflex. However, because you're not impacting the ground first and then leaping upwards, the emphasis of the movement is much more concentric on the push upwards. Yes, it's a test of power, rather like a squat is, but it's more removed from the long jump and the triple jump takeoffs than a drop jump, for example, you'll get more bang for your buck doing drop jumps than you will from stationary or near stationary jumps up onto a platform. The benefit of those stationary or near stationary jumps, I should say, is for sprint starts and accelerative purposes. I'm actually more keen on training for eccentric power or strength. As I've mentioned, 
An eccentric muscular action is a lengthening one. The muscles go on the stretch. Now, as I've mentioned previously as well, when your leg hits the ground, for example, from a hop in the triple jump, there's an eccentric stretch in the ankles, knees and the hip. If you're not eccentrically strong, you're going to move down, collapse through that movement unnecessarily. So training eccentrically will produce more power and enable a greater stretch and then more crucially, greater power on the concentric action reflex. As usual, thanks for listening and do give this video a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you must and good luck with your training and competition. Oh and do subscribe to the channel. And then when you power up into the jump they contract rapidly, they snap back. Maybe not quite like that but you get the idea. Hold on a sec.